All right, I have a Hobart dishwasher pot washer that's not heating up. All right, so this is the beast here. So I'm going to start tearing it down. I'm going to take all the panels off and show you how to get to access to all the components. So we'll just hit fast forward here just to speed things up a little bit. Uh, the left-hand side is where the tank elements are. This right-hand panel is basically all the contactors and all the boards, everything like that. All right, so first thing we're going to do is check incoming power. It is three phase. All right, so we do have 208 on all three phases. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to fire up the unit. And let's fill the unit first of all. So you can see here that the uh, solenoid is getting power. You can see my magnetic field detector there is spinning. So, and you can hear the unit as well, it's filling. So the unit is full. So now we're going to go check our visual cues before we go to the schematic. So first thing, you can see the wash temperature is not increasing from 120. And that contactor plunger is not pulling in. For our tank heater. All right, so we're going to start by identifying the load. In this case, that's this heater right here. So I'm just going to draw where the power should be. So we're just going to work backwards. I always find working backwards is the easiest way. Find the load and then just follow it back. So we're going to start with our T1 L1. It goes through the contact or contact, and it is a straight shot to our terminal block. L2, same thing. We come here, we go through our contact or contacts, and we're going to come right up to L2 on our terminal block, and then finally L3 is right here coming through the contacts, and that's going directly to our terminal block. All right, so as we can see there, these contacts are not closing. Okay, we had that visual cue. So the next step now is what closes the contacts. So in this case, it's the contactor coil. So this is labeled as two con or two contactor. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look for is the coil symbol, which is a circle with two con in it. And that's labeled right here. Right here. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to test for power at this contactor coil. All right, so I'm going to go test this contactor coil. Sorry, the angle's pretty bad here. Uh, I am getting zero volts at that coil. All right, I do not have power at the contactor coil. So the next place where I'm going to test is going to be at this point here and this point here. So what that is, is 2TB1, which is terminal block one and terminal block two. Okay, so by testing that, it's gonna tell me if the transformer is good and everything before the transformer. So it allows us to skip a couple steps here. So let me go do the testing there. All right, so I do have 120 volts across that TB1, TB2 terminal block. All right, so we do have power, so that means this whole circuit here is good, okay? So we're gonna be troubleshooting downstream at this point. So we're good all the way to here and across into our transformer on our neutral side. Our power light's on, so we know we're good here. So we're coming all the way down here. And then we have our board here for our float switch and we have our over temp, which is the high limit on the tank. And we have power coming to here. All right, next I'm going to test out this high limit. So just a manual reset. So it is clicking in. It was tripped. So as you could see there, this high limit was tripped. That's why we were losing power right here. This was tripped. It was in the open position. Okay.
Now it's closed and we can complete our circuit. We're going to come through here and come through here through our board. And now our contactor coil has power and you can see the plunger pulling in on the contactor. All right, so now I'm going to fire up the unit. contactor plunger pull in it clicked in you can visually see it's pulled in now so we do have proper coil voltage at this point so now I'm gonna move over to the element so this is on the left hand side of the unit I have 28 amps I'm gonna test all the legs here and make sure they're all drawing it's really tight here, sorry for the kind of shaky footage. Uh, 28 amps, so we're good here on all the legs. Temperature is coming off of 120, so it is rising, we are heating. Alright, so we've cycled off, plunger's no longer pulled in. And we cycled off at 168 Fahrenheit. Uh, I'm just going to take an amp draw now that the plunger is no longer pulled in to make sure there's no bleed through on this contactor. We want zero amps across all three legs, which we do have. this high limit trip. We're only getting the 168. So I'm just going to hit fast forward here, run a couple cycles and let's see what happens. So our rinse temperature is going now. So we're calling on that solenoid. So we're bringing water through that booster tank, which is bringing it through that rinse arm. You can see their magnetic field detectors telling us we have power there. We're in the rinse. And the rinse shut off about 180. Everything's checking out so far so good. I'm going to run a bunch more cycles and see why that thing tripped. So the wash now is at about 162. So what I'm going to do now is do a dry fire test. I'm going to empty water from the unit and make sure that, that pressure, or the uh, float switch is not giving issues. Alright, so I'm not drawing any amperage. We're not dry firing. Alright, so now my rinse temperature is getting way too hot. Uh, we're at 212, which it won't get hotter than that, and it just keeps calling for, he for heating. Uh, so first thing I found, I had a burnt wire on one of the elements. Okay, but the main reason I think is this uh, rinse probe, so let's get that changed out. And let's see if that gets us back into our 180 range and we're not overshooting the temperature. Alright, so now our rinse is at about 182 Fahrenheit. Uh, I'm going to run like 10 more cycles. I've ran about 5 just to make sure we don't overshoot the temperature and I'll monitor this unit very closely. All right, so a Hobart call here. They're always a little bit of a challenge because uh, I don't have access to the service manuals. I was pretty fortunate that I had a schematic. However, the schematic did not have a legend on it. So I couldn't tell what all the components were. So for instance, at first I thought that tank high limit was actually the thermostat it ended up being the reverse. And it actually had a probe for the thermostat. So I also got lucky on the fact that I'd lost power on the left hand side of that coil. Now if it was on the right hand side of that coil, that means the temp probe would have been bad or the board. Uh, I don't have an ohm chart for that probe, so I wouldn't have known if it was the board or the probe. So always limited when working on the Hobart stuff unfortunately. And then just other little things like the uh, wash temp was cutting out at 168. Is that too high? I'm not really sure. It seems like it might be maybe 5 or 6 degrees too high. And at first I thought that might have been causing the high limit to trip. So my end conclusion is that the booster tank was getting too hot from that probe, not shutting the water off at 180. You could see it was going up the boiling, going up to 212. And as that booster was filling up the tank, because that's where it takes the water from for the wash tank, 
it was just the water was way too hot now there's not much water in that booster tank and the wash tank's pretty big so at first i was thinking there's no way that's going to be the issue so i reset that high limit i came back the next day with the booster probe temp probe and it had tripped again so i changed the probe out and now it's been three weeks they have not called back so it looks like that has resolved the issue now if it has not resolved the issue the next thing i'm going to be looking at is that wash tank temp probe which was going up to 168 i'll be most likely changing that one out but at that point it'll be a super intermittent problem if we're getting the call back four weeks or five weeks later.